In this video, we'll be looking at the Veeam Explorer for storage snapshots. To keep the demonstration simple, we merely took a snapshot of a data store and then show you how you can recover a file from a virtual machine that was within that storage snapshot. You could also recover full virtual machines and even content from Exchange, Active Directory, SharePoint, SQL, and even Oracle. Let's take a look at the demonstration. We'll first show you how to create a snapshot on the storage array and then be able to pull from that snapshot a disk image and restore an individual file back to its current location. So we're going to start by showing you the virtual machine we're going to be working with. This here is the Veeam DC01. From here under the C drive, we'll see the important files directory and there'll be three files within this directory. In this example, we're going to delete one of these files and restore it with a storage snapshot. So let's open up the Veeam Backup and Replication console and select Storage Infrastructure. In the left window, we see under Storage Infrastructure expanded the HP Store Virtual Reference. When we expand that, we'll see the Veeam VASA and then beneath that, we'll see the Veeam VASA cluster. Once we select the VASA cluster in the right window, we'll be able to select Data Store 1. Once selected, we can see on the ribbon the option to create snapshot, or we can right click directly on the data store one and select create snapshot. In the new storage snapshot window, you'll see the volume name, but also the snapshot name. We're going to leave the default, but we could change that to whatever we want to keep that unique. There's also a snapshot description option beneath. It's always best practice to have a description for this example of the lab. We're not going to add a description. Now this window will take a little bit of time to load, so we need to be patient, but once the window loads, you'll see it's set up the process of being able to create this snapshot. So here's the window. The important piece we're looking for is at the top where it says status. At this point, it shows here the name, but over to the right, it says in progress. We want to be patient and wait through this process step by step until the final status says success. And now we see at the top, once this is said completed and the rescan has been completed, it shows success. Let's close this and move on to the next step. Now that we've created a storage snapshot, we can go and view that storage snapshot in the interface by going into the left window where we selected storage infrastructure originally, and now we can select home. And under backups, you'll see storage snapshots now appears. Once we highlight storage snapshots, you'll see the option in the right window to expand data store one, and it shows us the virtual machines within that data store one. In our example, we selected Veeam DC01, so we'll select that now. From here, we can right click, select restore guest files and select Microsoft Windows, or we can go to the ribbon at the top, hit the down arrow and select Microsoft Windows. Once we select this, you'll see a window appear. In the file level restore window, under restore point, you'll see the data store snapshot is already selected. So we'll select next and move down to location. This will take a moment, but from here, we're going to have to go down to the lower area where it says customize because we haven't populated the host name yet. So once we select customize, you'll see the option to be able to choose a host. In our example, the only host we have is Veeam ESX. So we select OK, and then from here, once it finds the host, it will self-populate the rest of the information for us, as we can see in the information here. Once we have that, we can select OK, and then move on to the next step. It's always a best practice to ensure the host name, resource, pool, and VM folder is correct before continuing. So at this point, we're going to select Next, and now we can type in a reason. As well as a best practice, we always want to put something in Reason, and then under Summary, we can select Finish. This window will take a little bit of time, but it is important to be patient. This is the window that's going to show us step-by-step step the process of mounting that individual VM disk, so we'll be able to restore individual files as needed. So once that window opens, you will need to also wait a little bit of time to ensure that everything has mounted properly. So up here, you'll see the VM file name. They have FLR for file level recovery, and then the virtual machine name. And then what we want to keep an eye on is status. 
The fourth step down in the process shows that we're mounting the restore point. Shortly after that, it's going to check for the availability of this storage snapshot, data store SS1, in the data store one volume. Then it's going to check for the snapshot clone to be created successfully, and then binding and then adding the iSCSI static target. And all these steps are showing up in this window to ensure that everything is loading properly. As these processes continue to show in the window below, we want to ensure that we understand that the status does show starting, but there will not be a success at the end. So we want to ensure that we keep an eye on all these steps, but once this completes, it's just going to close the window and then open the C drive within the window behind it. So don't expect to see it say success. Once it's done, you will not have to close this window. It will just disappear. So again, right here it's showing starting. This will not close out and say success and we have to select the close button in the end. And now we see the C drive of this virtual disk. In the backup browser window, you'll see that we have opened the Veeam DC01 virtual machine. Below, we see the important files directory, and when we open it, we see the three files we discussed earlier. Let's move this window over, and now we can open up the virtual machine we looked at in the beginning of the demonstration. And let's go ahead and delete one of these files to show how we recover it. So we select invoice, right click, and select delete. Once that file's been deleted, the next step is to restore it back to its original location. So we go back to the backup browser window, select the invoice file that we deleted, use the drop down from the ribbon, and you'll see the options for overwrite or keep. We're going to select overwrite for this example. Once we select overwrite, we will need to provide a credential to be able to replace that file to its original location. In this example, we're going to use the administrator account and then click OK. Once the authentication succeeds, we'll see the window on the right start to perform the restore. If we watch the window on the left, you will see at the top the invoice file reappear in its original directory, important files in that virtual machine. On the right, we'll see that it shows success for one file. If we click Show Details, we can see more detailed information on what happened during this process. Now that the restore is completed, we can close that sub-window and go back into the backup browser if needed in case there were any other files we needed to recover. This concludes the demonstration on the Veeam Explorer for storage snapshots. Please check out other how-to videos and thank you for watching.